Okay, so welcome back. Welcome back. So this is going to be a new playlist and this is going to be Unit 6, BTEC Level 3, Microcontrollers for Engineers. I believe that's what it's called. So this is just going to give you an introduction as to what is to come in Unit 6. So as I've said, the name is Unit 6 Microcontroller Systems for Engineers. We are now engineers and need to understand how these systems work. This is an exam unit, a practical exam. So you will not be a written paper exam. You're going to have to go into the exam, do some work, submit a document with all the evidence. It's a 12 hour exam. There's no coursework. This is a very big unit. It's 120 guided learning hours. That's typically double of what the coursework units are. So a typical BTEC Level 3 coursework unit is 60 guided learning hours. So this is double that, 120. So the specification has everything you ever need to know for Unit 6. It doesn't teach you, but again, with enough time, you can sit down, you can Google, you can use books, and you can figure out exactly what needs to be done. I will put a link to the specification in the description of this video. But if I quickly open the spec, a 15-page document which goes through in great detail everything you need to do for the exam, everything you need to learn, everything you need to understand for the exam. Very, very simple document. The specification is definitely something I would recommend every student read. Now, there are a few other documents that I recommend as well, but I'm going to go over those in due time. So how will you be assessed? There are going to be four objectives of this unit. You'll need to meet all of these to get a distinction. You'll be given a task to complete in 12 hours. This will be spread across multiple days. I think for me, let me just grab my pen. I might do uh, three hours per day. So that would make it four days in total. So I'm going to have four days. Now they allow for five because some students, they might need to have extra time. These can change slightly. For example, where it says a distinction is 53, this might drop down to 51. It might go up to 54. There's no specific number that we have as, as of yet. It's all down to what the exam board think at the time. So this is just a rough guideline of the grades. So for example, if you get zero out of 80, that's obviously unclassified, that's ungraded. If you get seven out of 80, that's going to be a near pass. If you get 15 out of 80, that's going to be a pass. A merit is 34 out of 80. And a distinction is going to be 53 out of 80. So not that far off 50% of the paper, I would say. Here's a pass paper for January 2022. Again, I will try to put the link in the description for this. And I also think it's a really good idea. If the link in the description does not work, it would be a good idea to ask your teachers to give you or to allow you access to the, the examiner's report for a few past papers. So I have 2022, I might have one for 2021. I might share both of those, but it's always a good idea to look at exactly what the examiner is expecting. So ask your teacher, please, please, please ask your teacher to give you or show you what an examiner's report for a specific past paper looks like. Submission. There are three things that will be needed. The first is going to be a PDF of an electronic task booklet. This is the document you have to fill in from tasks one to task six. A video file of no longer than three minutes showing your system in operation. So your system should be working to some degree or fully working. And you have a video explaining what is happening at each stage. And finally, a fully completed authentication sheet. Now, these aren't things you have to worry about. These are things you do at the end. This is the only thing that's, let's say, is a live document. So you, you do this across. Again, I said mine was going to be four days. So across those four days, I'm going to have an electronic task booklet for f um, to cover the entire time. So the naming convention, if my name was Ron Builder, right? So booklet, that's going to be the first thing. Then you have underscore registration number underscore your surname underscore first letter of your first name so again it's just going to be booklet underscore your registration number would most likely be your exam candidate number which will be provided to you on the day so that's not something you have to worry about again i just made up a random number here underscore my surname is builder it really isn't but i'm just giving an example and my first name is run right that's why we have the r this must be a pdf by the end of the exam do not submit a word document you will 100 percent lose marks for doing this i will also show how to export a word document as a pdf so everyone knows the steps if you're using microsoft word if your school is using another version of word or 
um, an alternative to Microsoft Word, it's going to be more or less the same process. So please make sure you only submit a PDF at the end. So the video submission also has a naming convention. It's very similar. It's just going to be file, again, your underscore and your registration number or your exam candidate number, underscore again, your surname, underscore again, first letter of your first name, and that's it. So for me, it would be file. This is the number I came up with earlier, underscore again, builder, underscore R, but again, I will show this in an actual video, show you guys how to actually rename your videos. You will have to use a mobile phone or a camera provided by your school to record your system in operation with you explaining a few things, get it onto your system, rename the file and submit the file. The authentication sheet is something that's going to be given to you by either your teacher on the day, the examiners or someone at the college. So this isn't something you have to worry about. It's simply going to be you filling a few details, ticking and signing, and that's it. Nothing else, nothing crazy about this one. So the template document, I created this PowerPoint for my students. So that's why I have links in here, but I will again provide links in the video description for the actual template and where you can actually go and get that. I will be working through the template as well so you guys will see exactly what it looks like. I recommend everyone download it and make sure you have a working or activated version of Microsoft Office. If not, you can always go WPS Office. That's completely free. We can also go LibreOffice, L-I-B-R-E. It's LibreOffice. That's completely free. And it works on Mac, Windows, and even Android and iOS. So these are two really, really good free versions of, of Office that will do it exactly what we needed to do and a lot more. Quick note, uh, a single PDF must be given at the end. You use a word processor or PowerPoint. I recommend highly using a word processor. PowerPoint is a bit tricky to use. You will possibly lose marks if a PDF is not given. Keep that in mind. I'm not sure if I have this on the next slides, but you will need to create, for example, a Gantt chart. So you will need a spreadsheet. I'm just going to put SPR. That's for spreadsheet. You will need some spreadsheet program as well. You're going to need to do um, flow charts, pseudocode. So you can do your pseudocode in Word, but your flow charts, maybe something like Microsoft Visio, I think it's V-I-S-I-O. Uh, if it's not V-I-S-I-O, it's V-I-Z-I-O. That's a drawing program that... Uh, the industry uses for diagrams. That's quite good as well. You can use PowerPoint for diagramming your stuff. And another one you can use is called Fritzing, F-R-I-T-Z-I-N-G. I believe it is free up until a certain version, but this is what I'm gonna be using for my circuit design. Makes it very, very simple to visualize what's happening. So the learning outcomes of this entire thing is to produce a technical specification and a design for a microcontroller system to solve a problem. We don't know the problem yet. This is one of the, the really tricky things I don't like about this unit. We don't know what the problem is. So you're, you're gonna have to learn a breadth of things to try and be able to solve any problem within reason. Develop and test a software and hardware solution for a microcontroller system to solve a problem. Again, we still don't know the problem. Project manage the development cycle, life cycle and present the operation of a microcontroller system to solve a problem. So these are the three things that you're going to have to do in this unit. Now, these are broken down further. So there are a total of six activities. Each activity uh, leads into the next and I have them all here. Task one, planning and system design. Uh, sorry, activity one. Activity two, analysis of the client brief. So you're going to get something from a client that says, I want this system to be done blah 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 you're going to actually analyze that brief you're going to actually look into the details and see what needs to be done system design this is typically going to be a pseudocode and we're going to put ps because i don't have my pen with me ps is for pseudocode and we're going to also have fl for flowcharts so flowchart is a pictorial so like an image representation of what needs to be done and pseudocode is a textual description of what needs to be done. System assembly and programming, quite simply, you're going to do what you've designed here. Oh, I forgot one thing for system design, circuit design as well. C-I-R for circuit. And again, we're going to be using fritzing for circuit design. Activity for system assembly and programming. So whatever we said we're going to do here, that's what we actually do in this section. So the circuit design I've made here, I'm going to actually build the circuit, add my LEDs, add my buttons, my switches, my relays, my so on and so forth. Um, and then I'm going to actually program based on the flowchart and pseudocode logic. So whatever I said I'm going to do here, I do here. Now you can make changes as and when necessary, but typically speaking, you design and then you implement. System testing and result analysis. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to test your system, look at the results and see what and see if it meets the criteria. And activity six, that's going to be the video showing the system in operation. Again, that needs to be about, well, no longer than three minutes. Activity one, task planning and system design. Simply plan what you are expected to do. The system will be up, this section will be up 
updated along with all the others. So you're going to keep coming back to activity one because activity one is essentially a log, a daily log of everything you're going to be doing. So let's just say we've done activity one for day one and now we move on to activity two. Activity two, we're going to have to come back to the log and we're going to say, I did this, it went well, this didn't go so well, this is how I fixed it, so on and so forth. So activity one is very, very important. It will hold information on what was done in each section and why. So we're going to have to justify why we did that thing as well. The time for this is going to be roughly 1.5 hours for activity one. So every day across the four days, we're going to do 20, 30 minutes each to add up to the 1.5 hours. So again, the plan is simply what you intend to do. Things will most likely change, which is perfectly fine. You will have a chance to come back and make an actual log of what you did. So I say this because we're going to have to do something known as a Gantt chart, G-A-N-T-T, -A, -T -T, a Gantt chart. The way I'm going to do mine is very, well, is slightly different from how the examiner did theirs. I want to have two separate Gantt charts, but I'm also going to show you guys how to do one single Gantt chart that has all the information on there. So for example, activity one, activity two, and we're going to do activity three, right? Activity one was, I believe, 1.5 hours, right? If this changes later on, to let's say two hours, we're going to put that on our Gantt chart to say activity one, this was activity one plan. The plan didn't go according to how I wanted it to. So activity two, so sorry. So activity one actually took uh, two hours instead of 1.5. Activity two was supposed to take 1.5 again, let's say, but instead of taking 1.5, it only took me one hour. So I'm going to put 1.0 here. Just as a basic example, this is what the plan is supposed to entail for the Gantt chart section. So this is why I've said here, some of you might do two logs, some might do a single overlapping log. But again, I'm gonna show all of this in Microsoft Excel. And this same process should work for any spreadsheet program you intend to use. I don't recommend, this is the only time I don't recommend using an online one because you won't have the option to use the internet in the exam. Because of this, it's, 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 it's a good idea to get practice using the offline stuff like um, Microsoft Excel or LibreOffice Writer or whatever offline spreadsheet program that there is. So this is an example of a Gantt chart. So as you can see here, activity one, um, and we have the time at the top, we have the activities down the side and the time at the top. Activity one, we have planned, but let me just go to the next one and see if it's there. No, it's not there. Activity one, we have planned. Underneath that, we should ideally have activity one actual. So if it didn't take two hours, we can put 1.5 instead. If it took three hours, we can go out here. So this is what we plan to do. Probably not, red is probably not the best color here. This is what we plan to do at the top. And underneath is what we actually did. But again, I'm going to go over this. This is my version of the Gantt chart. I think it's a bit easier to understand. Again, it still goes from zero hours to 12 hours. I just break mine down into, into 30 minute chunks. So where it says activity one was supposed to be 1.5 hours, I've only got three blocks. And I've got three blocks because 30 plus 30 plus 30 minutes equals 90 minutes. And 90 minutes is one and a half hours, right? Activity two, same thing, one and a half hours. So we use three blocks. Activity three, that's what, five. So that's 2.5 hours. Activity four, again, that looks like five. That's 2.5 hours again. Activity five, another 1.5 hours. And activity f uh, six, that looks like 2.5 hours again. Yep. So again, these times, I didn't create these times randomly. I got these timings exactly from the exam paper. And again, I will explain this and show it when we get to that section. As I said, we just get the recommended times from the exam paper. Just put those in, right? Uh, if it does change later, that needs to be reflected, which I will show again. And it will most likely change. You won't stick to these times rigidly because some people will go over, some people will go under. As I've said before, we're going to have two Gantt charts. One will be before you start working. It should be a plan of what you intend to do. The other will be the actual time taken. And that's why on this one here, for example, they have planned. And what was supposed to happen underneath that, we're supposed to have actual. So activity one planned, activity one actual. After the initial Gantt chart, the next thing to do is to create a log. The log should ideally have the following points. All the logs must be in activity one. Please keep that in mind. We're going to always be coming back to activity one. But I have a template and I'm going to show you a rough idea. Well, my interpretation of how I would fill that template in is very, very simple. The so points for activity one, the date. And we have the date because this could potentially go across four or five days, let's say, right? Again, three hours per day, four days. That's going to be roughly 12 hours. Well, it's going to be 12 hours. Some people might need more. Day of the exam, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, what have I done in this session? I will go over this. It needs to be in a lot. It, it needs to be very detailed. It won't just be 
I read the assignment brief, I did this. No, it's going to be quite detailed. Issues encountered this session and solutions with justification. So whatever issues you came across, how did you solve the issue? And why did you use that specific solution to solve the issue? Action points for next session. Simply, what are you going to be doing tomorrow? Or what are you going to be doing in the next step? So I've got daily logs again. You must always come back to the logs. Complete all the previous points. Put all the information for the logs for each day you have the exam. So again, I've given the example. Three hours per day times four days. If I have four days, I'm supposed to have four logs because each day is supposed to have its own log. If your school wants to do it slightly differently, four hours a day for three days. Again, the days are the logs. So I'm going to have three logs instead. Uh, yeah, as I said, do one log per day. If your exam lasts for four days, you will need four logs. Same thing. And here are the timings I grabbed from the 2022 past paper. Now, this will 100% be on your paper as well. So let me just bring that up quickly to show you what that looks like. Um, this is the 2022 paper, I believe. So if I just scroll down and if I go to activity one, if I can find it, here we go. Activity one and it says 1.5 hours. Activity 2, 1.5 hours. Activity 3, 2.5 hours. Activity 4, 2.5 hours. Activity 5, 1.5. And Activity 6, 2.5 hours. Pretty straightforward and simple. So the Gantt chart is going to easily be the easiest thing you'll do in this exam because you simply follow the times that they've given you and then start working. And if your times change, you come back and change these times or have a copy but with different timings. All right, now that I've gone over my PowerPoint, again, this is the spec. I will share this in the link. This is the delivery guide. This is what some teachers will actually use to actually go through and teach you guys what needs to be done. Over here, I've got a 2022 past paper. I'll double check if I'm actually allowed to share this with, with anyone as of yet. If not, I'll share the 2021 or the 2020 past paper. Over here, we have the examiner's report. Now, this is something that every single student needs to request from their teacher. Reason being, let me just scroll through quickly. It, show, it tells you the, the grade breakdowns, that's fine. But the main thing it does, it shows you how to do each section. So again, this is how the Gantt chart would be done. We have a, let me zoom in. We have plan time and we have actual time. I prefer this method because it shows obviously very easily that this was the initial plan, but this is what actually happened. Uh, below that, we're going to have what some student did for activity one, which was maybe not so great. And below that, we have what another student did for activity one, which was more detailed. So the whole purpose, the entire purpose of the examiner's report is to give you, the new exam students, perfect answers for the exam or perfect methods or better methods on how to answer those different sections. So please stay tuned. Hopefully that was useful. And I'm going to try my best to get through this as quickly as possible showing you all the steps I can. There is another YouTube channel on, on YouTube that um, has unit six stuff. I will 100% share that person's series or playlist in my videos as well. So please go over there and watch his stuff as well, because it was very, very good.